taxpayers or rural areas or Native American reservations. You can't leave people behind, which is why we need equal pay, paid leave, and affordable child care. It's why we need why we need immigration reform. We need to stop playing politics with immigrants. Our youth and diversity are our meal ticket to the future. That's why we need to put this issue behind us as a politic political issue and lift the human potential of all Americans. It's why. It's why we need to do whatever is necessary to close the gap between the unemployment rate for veterans and the unemployment rate for the rest of us. Most veterans should be more employable than the rest of the population, and the only reason they're not is that so many have suffered from post-traumatic stress syndrome from their multiple deployments. That's why when Hillary says we need a $10 billion community mental health program to deal with the epidemic of prescription drugs and heroin, but also to deal with the continued troubles that veterans have, you need to know that's an economic strategy. It's not just a decent, humane, honorable thing to do. It will unleash the potential of millions of your fellow citizens who can contribute to our future. Sentences that are too long for crimes that are not serious, we should give them a chance to begin again. But if you want to do it, you've got to give them the education and training and the assurance that they will not be denied consideration for work because they've once been in jail. If we're going to start again, let's let everybody start again so we can all rise together. This is very, very important. If you do that and we invest in a modern infrastructure, in a modern clean energy plan, in modern manufacturing jobs, if we get the banks to start making loans to small businesses again, which is two-thirds of our job growth and has been for 20 years. We can do this. We can all rise together. But it depends on whether you believe in building a future prosperity, the likes of which America has never seen, that we can all participate in. How about all the money and pensions you poured into Mexico? Or you believe. Do you regret that? What did you say? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, let's talk about that. No, 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 just a minute. Now, if I talk about it, will you let me talk instead of interrupting me? Okay. When the crime bill of 1994 came over from the House, it had stronger incarceration procedures than I originally asked for. They cover about 8% of total people in prison. More than 90% are in state and local prisons. Hillary's opponent in the primary voted for that bill. When we got to the Senate, the Senate included an assault weapons ban with an ammunition clip limit, which had never before been included in the law. I had just been through a knockdown drag out fight to get universal background checks in. They didn't think they could get it passed in the House without including the incarceration provisions. Over one year ago, I went to the NAACP, before I think, before Hillary even declared for office, and I said, the federal crime bill overdid that incarceration business, and we need to let a lot of these young people out. Many years ago, I myself commuted the sentences of a lot of people who were put in prison for drug offenses that were excessive. And President Obama is basically completing the cycle of what we cited then. So yeah, we didn't do everything right. But I did get the American people. Now don't interrupt me. You said you want me to talk. <laughs> so first of all, there's only one person that didn't vote for that, and that's Hillary, not Senator Sanders. She didn't vote for it. Number two, and most important, look at what you did get. You got community policing. You got after school programs and night programs for young people who are in trouble. And you got the lowest crime rate in 25 years, the lowest murder rate in 33 years, and the lowest death from illegal gun homicides in 47 years. So I thought that the lives we were saving mattered. I've never claimed that it was perfect. I just claimed that when you make laws, 
you have to decide if you're going to make the perfect the enemy of the good. And there's a lot of people walking around alive today because we had the lowest gun death rate in 47 years. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that. And I think she was the first candidate in either party to say the same thing and to argue that we needed a systematic effort at the national level and at the state level and at the local level to let people out of jail who've been in there too long. Here in California, it cost you almost $65,000 to incarcerate somebody for a year. How many people could you educate here? How many children could go through this art center if we did that? So I think we're having a vigorous agreement. And I notice, I don't think it's right to look back and cherry pick my record and then try to blame Hillary or everything somebody disagrees with. If you're gonna, if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna do that, you at least ought to give her credit for the things she agreed with. She's the only person you can vote for who's. Wait a minute. Wait, well, okay, wait, wait, all right, wait a minute. No, no, this is good. And now, now, will you let me answer that? Will, will you answer, let me answer that? When I became president, I raised taxes on the top 1%. I raised taxes on the wealthiest corporations. I put a man in to regulate Wall Street who did his job so well that the Republicans threatened to defund the Security and Exchange Commission because he was doing his job. <laughs> and, wait, 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 wait. And I will say again, it is the only time in history when income gains in America for the bottom 20% went up in higher percentage terms than the top 20%, and when they were led by African-American fam families, secondly by Latino families, and nobody else was mad because we were all rising together. You can't, you know, it is highly inconvenient. I've, been, I've watched this whole campaign where somebody says, oh, can I find one little thing that happened that I will disagree with, and then blame him for it, and then maybe I can make people forget that's the only time in 50 years when our incomes all rose together, when we had record numbers of jobs, record numbers of income, and record number of progress. And, oh, by the way, there was only one law that had anything to do with the financial crash, and that's one that exempted from federal regulations these complex securities and derivatives. It passed with about 80-something percent of both houses. It wasn't my idea, they passed it. They put it in a bill which reenacted something I wanted real badly called the Community Reinvestment Act. It required banks to make loans in every community where they had ATM machines. When I was president, more than 90% of all the loans made to ordinary people, including three times the loans ever made to minority-owned businesses, more than twice the loans ever made to women-owned businesses by the Small Business Administration, and the whole history of the SBA were made when I was president. That's one of the reasons we all rose together. So did I want it? Yeah. There was $800 billion worth of loans we'd already made under the Community Reinvestment Act. Now, it didn't cause any problems when I was there, but later when President Bush and the Republican Congress got elected and they stopped regulating things and nobody was home as the bank regulators and the SEC, it was a problem. But, again, if you want somebody, there's only one person who didn't vote for it in the Democratic primary, but she wasn't in Congress, that was Hillary. Her opponent did vote for it. Do I, have, have I ever one time accused him of wrongly doing something intentionally? Of course not. I think he made a mistake, but I don't believe he was in the tank. And this whole campaign has been some kind of weird <laughs> attempt to say, let's not look at what really happened, which is we all grew together. Let's look at what really happened, which is we moved 100 times as many people out of poverty when I was president and when Reagan was president. Let's not look at what really happened that we tried to deal with this. Let's see if we can turn everything on its head, turn upside down, inside out, and backwards. I don't believe that.
Now, if you want to know what the real problem with inequality is today, I was going to get to that. 